history buffs. Welcome to this special presentation of the Big Game James Show. Presented by Thinkslinger.org. And now, presenting your most handsome host, Big Game James. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Big Game James Show. I'm your host, James F. Thomas IV, and have we got a show for you this week. But first, before we get going, I have a few announcements to make. And as a reminder, you can hear us at iTunes, on the Stitcher app, and over at TuneIn, as well as here at Spreaker.com forward slash ThinkSlinger. And we've finally started a Facebook fan page. You can find that easily at Facebook.com forward slash BGJ Show. That's Facebook.com forward slash BGJ show. So check it out. Give it a like, share it with your friends, uh, help us spread the word again. That's facebook.com forward slash BGJ show. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's program, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a, I wanted to give a shout out to the Tulane green wave for defeating their conference rivals, the UCF Knights. Today, not not just winning the game, but they beat them ten to nothing, and the the ten run rule, the mercy rule, was invoked in the bottom of the seventh inning. Congratulations to the Tulane Green Wave for winning that series over the UCF Knights, two games to one. And ladies and gentlemen, have we a dandy for you this week? Yes, I said dandy. <laughs> Let me get, get a hold of my notes here. All right, so as usual, we're going to start the show with sort of an overview of the past week. That way we have some sort of context to work with um, and, and prep you for what to expect this coming week. Get you all excited for some more baseball this week, of course. Um, also, we're going to talk about Chris Bryant. He, uh, is, of course, is the Ricky, rookie phenom who made his Major League debut this week. And what good is a baseball broadcast without talking about Chris Bryant for at least a couple of seconds, right? <laughs> well, we're going to talk about him for a couple of minutes. I'm going to give you my point of view and my feelings on Chris Bryant thus far, as well as a... A story that I would like to share. That That's coming up as well. And also, we're going to talk about Pete Rose. Pete Rose and his bid for the Hall of Fame. And also, Pete Rose and his bid just for, you know, being reinstated into baseball. So, stick around. We're going to take a real quick break. And we'll be back after this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to week three of uh, Major League Baseball's young season. And on tap for you, we have a most jam-packed week, the most jam-packed so far of the 2015 season, as 14 of the 30 teams will play 
all seven days. It's also, uh, however, light on interleague play with only two series and five total games, though among those is the annual so-called Subway Series between the New York Yankees and the Mets. This one at Yankee Stadium. And in pitching, fortunately, Carlos Carrasco seems to be doing okay. He uh, This week marks his return to the Cleveland Indians rotation after he was forced from his start on April 14th because of a scary incident where he was uh, struck in the face by a line drive. Fortunately, it seems Carrasco is okay. He's gonna get uh, he's gonna get the nod this week. He's rejoining the rotation, and that is just great news. Um, he's not the only pitcher working his way back from an injury, as the LA Angels is uh, Garrett Richards will make his second start later this week, and Ian Kennedy of the San Diego Padres is expected to rejoin the Padres rotation before the end of the week, um, possibly pitching on Saturday. Kennedy has been nursing a nagging hamstring injury, and he actually threw a session uh, last Friday and is supposed to pitch an extended uh, spring training game before he actually gets the nod. Uh, Dennis Lynn of the Union Tribune reports. And speaking of the Padres, week three looks like it could be very favorable to their hitters, and we'll get to that later in the program. But first, let's take a look at this week's interleague series matchup, starting with the Texas Rangers at the Arizona Diamondbacks. Now, the Rangers, obviously in the American League, Diamondbacks in the National League, they're going to play by the National League's rules, which means there isn't going to be a DH, and that could be problematic for the Rangers. Um, Both Mitch Moreland and Prince Fielder have uh, time at the DH spot, but and both of them are generally first basemen when not playing uh, the role of DH. And they're both left-handed, but... Since Fielder is the more proven offensive force thus far this season, he is more uh, likely to start these games at Arizona's Chase Field. Uh, Moreland could sneak in a start in left field, but that's kind of unlikely because he's had some nagging ankle problems. Um, The Rangers rarely floated this idea during spring training as well, so there's no indication that this might actually happen, though, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it did, because the Rangers are going to try and pull out all the stops to get uh, some victories. The Rangers will kick off the series by sending right-hander Nick Martinez to the mound, and he'll be looking for his third win in as many starts. He lasted seven innings in each of his previous two starts and had a 13-inning scoreless streak snapped against the Angels last time he was out uh, when an unearned run scored in the seventh. On the other side, Arizona starter Chase Anderson, who's uh, from Wichita Falls, Texas, is still in search of his first win of the year, so he's going to come out hungry. He pitched well his last time out in holding the Padres to two runs over six innings in San Diego at Petco Park. The D-backs offense, though, struggled to provide support, and San Diego eventually won the game 3-2. Some key things to know about this series, especially Game 1, is Martinez is 4-2 with a 1.64 ERA in his last eight starts dating back to last season. He should have a pretty good outing. The D-backs have won uh, Anderson's Last three starts at Chase Field, and they are 6-2 and two in his last eight. Again, look for this to be a pretty good matchup. Now, Adrian Beltre, on the other hand, has uh, hit 321 in interleague play uh, since joining the Rangers in 2011, and that's the second highest by a Rangers player with at least 100 at-bats. In three interleague starts, Anderson is 1-1 one one with a 3.86 ERA, and Rangers pitching... Rather, Rangers pitchers are hitting 150 in interleague play over the past five seasons. Um, That's the highest for any American League team. So keep a close eye on this one. The two-game series begins Tuesday night. And on to the Subway Series, the much-anticipated Subway Series. The Yankees and the Mets get an extra long Series in 2015, the teams are set to play 
six games. Um, the first series at coming at the end of this week. Um, from April 24th to 26th at Yankee Stadium. Then comes uh, three more games in September at City Field from September 18th through 20th. The Mets and Yankees had played four games over four consecutive days the past two seasons, splitting two at each park. And here's an interesting fact about the Subway Series. It will be the first ever played without Derek Jeter in the lineup. And since the first series is held at Yankee Stadium, the Mets are going to have to figure out um, who's going to hit in the DH spot. Is it going to be John Mayberry Jr., Lucas Duda, Curtis Granderson, or maybe Daniel Murphy? The latter three represent the Mets' weakest defenders, so the team could, and they probably will, use the spot to stash a more offensively-oriented player to open a field position for a better defender. But first, it seems like... The number three position, that is first base, seems a likely arrangement with Mayberry picking up the majority of the added plate appearances. Considering uh, the hitter-friendly environment at New York's Yankee Stadium, as well as you know their opponent on Saturday, who's going to be uh, set to be CC Sabathia, Mayberry could be a handy one-week uh, plug-in for the Mets to get them you know over the Yankees. But don't count out uh, Granderson. Granderson began the season at 1 for 17, had a lot of people pulling their hair out, especially in the fantasy leagues, but he went 4 for 9 um, last week over a uh, two-game span. So while we're still waiting for the power, you know, all the power that this guy has, he's, he's, he does have some pop in the bat. Um, he has no homers and no RBIs yet this season, but he's shown impressive plate discipline um, and the the Mets might need a few extra walks to get over the, 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 the Yankees this year. It seems like he could score a lot of runs if he's added in, into the lineup. So look for Curtis Granderson to make some appearances as well, uh, possibly at the DH position. But before the Mets can start actually thinking about the Yankees, <laughs> they have to uh, deal with the Atlanta Braves First, as uh, Trevor Cahill will start Tuesday on the mound opposite John Neese as the Braves visit the Mets for a three-game series following an off day for both teams. They're both off on Monday. Cahill surrendered four earned runs and completed just two and a third innings while making his season debut during uh, last Tuesday's 8-2 to loss to the Marlins. Neese opened the season at Atlanta and was handed the loss on uh in that April 10th start, despite allowing just one earned run. He did the same uh, in Philadelphia during his second start, but he earned um, the win. Things to Some things to kind of think about during the Braves-Mets series. Uh, the Braves are entering their second series of a three-city, nine-game road trip. It's pretty long, even for Major League standards. After a three-game series in Toronto, they face the Mets for a trio before wrapping things up in Philly later the, this week. Atlanta's offense has taken, an, uh, has taken an upswing following a productive series against the Blue Jays um, after a streak in which uh, four games, um, a streak of four games where they put up fewer than three runs, the Braves turned it around um, and have scored five or more in each of their last three games, and that is to, in Toronto. The, the, now the Mets, on the other hand, uh, Nice is a familiar foe of the Braves. Um, the left-hander has made 19 career starts against Atlanta, posting uh, a decent 7-6 and six record with a 3.36 ERA in 112 and two-thirds innings. He was 1-2 with a 2.61 ERA in three starts against the Braves last year in 2014. So, Upcoming for the Mets, they got they have to deal with the Braves, and then they have the Subway Series at the end of the week. Now, the Yankees, on the other hand, are tasked with going to Detroit to face the Tigers, the very, very impressive Tigers. Um, fortunately, they have a day off as well prior to that uh, Monday, and they need to take advantage of that day off and, and, and rest everyone because <laughs> they're going to have their hands full with the tigers um it, it 